Inside Gaming is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Keep your location private from the strangers you game with online at expressvpn.com slash inside. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Thanksgiving. Oh, my, I hope you got that bird brining. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the worldwide pandemic and how it's affected our precious games, the most important mm. resource we have after unobtainium. Mm. Obviously, the biggest news story of the year, but maybe the decade, COVID-19, the virus, you may have heard of it, which caused mm -hmm. untold deaths and worldwide lockdowns. Uh, yeah, and, you know, the reason that we live the way we do, the reason we're shooting the show the way right. we are. <laughs> right, that uh, changed everything. Yeah. yeah, you may have heard of it. So we're going to talk about how it had profound impacts on the video game industry that we're probably going to feel for years to come. Some, mm -hmm. some I think, just temporary, but some, I think, are going to be much longer lasting. Yeah, and when it comes to how the coronavirus has impacted the industry, it's not as easy as saying it was all bad, because while it has resulted in major events being canceled and tons of game delays, the reality is that we're all playing more video games than ever. Lockdowns have forced people indoors, away from all that disgusting fresh air and sunshine, and more and more of us are spending all day in front of our screens the way God intended. Uh, for some of us, actually, we're probably getting better air quality. Okay, so let's run down all the myriad of ways that the pandemic has affected the gaming industry. Uh, first, we should talk about all the industry events that got canceled because COVID affected almost every single one of them. It could probably say all, but then there might be one like actually uh, Jim's Game Emporium in Seattle actually <laughs> right. held their they con held their this year. Yeah, the, the Republican Gaming Coalition yes. so held, their, yes. held their Missouri event. <laughs> Anyway, the cancellation started with the Taipei Game Show, which was planned for February, but then was pushed back to June before eventually being canceled. A similar situation for all of the big conventions. Gamescom moved online, Paris Games Week was canceled, the Brazil Game Show was 86, and of course, E3 was called off as well. And in the case of E3, which was already struggling before the pandemic, it still remains to be seen if it will return at all next year, although the organizers have vowed to do so. Anyway, a number of virtual events sprung up to attempt to take their place Places. Uh, there was the four month summer game fest that Jeff Keeley started. But uh, again, it, it's hard to beat that in person experience. Lots of in person esports events were canceled too, from the Pokemon World Championships to the ESL Pro League to the Overwatch League. Uh, some, like the Pokemon World Championships, were just canceled outright. Others went online only. We are starting to see some events come back now with lots more masks and social distancing, but there's no getting around the fact that 2020 was a disaster for in person events. Yep. Hardware production as well, also greatly affected by the pandemic. And while demand for the Switch jumped during the coronavirus, Nintendo had to scale back production due to a lack of supply components from its suppliers in China. Yeah, it was like they full they couldn't fully jump on it, it felt like, because yeah. they, they just ran out of stuff. And then, of course, Valve had to reduce production of its Valve Index VR headset due to component issues, too. That was a big deal because people wanted it to play Half-Life Alex on. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was lots of speculation when it came to the next gen consoles that Microsoft and Sony would have to delay production. Uh, but so far, uh, both companies managed to hit their release dates. Although I feel like, I still feel like there's some supply issues that they have. There's no fully. way yeah. that they, yeah, hit the numbers they wanted no, to I don't or could so. have. We'll talk more about the impact of COVID on the gaming industry, but first, let's talk about HBO Max. Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by HBO Max. In true 2020 fashion, the holidays are going to look a little different this year. That's why we partnered with HBO Max to keep the spirit of togetherness alive with their library of feel good films for the holiday season. Are you staying put with your quarantine crew? HBO Max has the bingeable series for you. At home with your overbearing family? HBO Max has that movie to get lost in. Doing the holiday solo, maybe. HBO Max has the titles you'll want to discuss with your friends and family virtually. No matter what mood you're in this holiday season, HBO Max has got something for you. HBO Max has so many classic holiday films now streaming. You got A Holiday Affair, A Christmas Carol. Personally, uh, I'm gonna watch The Last Christmas, The Family Stone, and of course, Binging Succession, all of which you can find on HBO via HBO Max. So get cozy at home this holiday season by heading to hbomax.com now. All right, so there is a bright side to all this when it comes to the gaming industry anyway. And that is people are playing a lot more games. In July, when we were already months into the pandemic, the MPD group said that total sales of video game hardware and software in the US during the first six months of 2020 hit 6.6 .6 billion. 
That was the highest since 2010. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what's happening in this current moment. Analyst Michael Pachter told the Washington Post, people are at home, they have nothing to do, they are not commuting, you have more time and you're bored. So yeah, voila, we play video yep. games. In April, Microsoft disclosed that the number of subscribers to Game Pass broke 10 million. Then in September, they reported that the number had spiked to 15 million subscribers. And as for individual games, one of the breakout hits of 2020 was Animal Crossing New Horizons, which holy sh crazy yeah uh it was a welcome break for many offering a peaceful island getaway as the world was in the grips of a pandemic it sold more than 26 million copies the second best selling game of all time for the switch yeah it was, which, it's like, like approaching i would Mario not Kart. i would never have guessed that that game would be the one to do that it just hit the know? zeitgeist at just yeah. the right time and you could visit other people's islands and hang out virtually people were having like protests and like mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff people just sort of took it and, and like also, made it their own thing yeah. i think a lot of people who maybe hadn't played video games and all like sense gamecube animal yes. crossing maybe yes. were kind of like oh i could get into this this I is something i remember people, and i need yeah. time I have time to kill right now. We also saw a lot of games take advantage of the fact that lots of people want to play together, even remotely. Multiplayer games like Among Us, Fall Guys, and Phasmophobia became out of nowhere hits due in large part to their communal nature. As NPD analyst Matt Piscatella told Yahoo Finance, one of the big trends we're seeing in player behavior through the pandemic is that video games have become one of the primary ways friends and family have stayed connected. And then there was also fitness games that got really popular because people were stuck inside. Uh, Nintendiad. Nintendiads. <laughs> Nintendo's Ring Fit Adventure saw a huge surge in interest. Uh, that that even had shortages because there was high demand and you had to have the like Pilates ring with yep. it. There was kind of some special equipment that they were having mm -hmm. trouble producing. Uh, and thanks to the strength of Ring Fit and Animal Crossing and other games, Nintendo's profits went insane this year. They're up more than 200%. That game was so rare that when I see it in stores now, I'm like, oh, I should buy this. Yeah, just to have I it. I don't need it. And sell I'm it. I'm not gonna use it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need it. But the, the <laughs> scarcity makes my blizzard yeah. brain wanna buy it. <laughs> yeah. Activision Blizzard's profits grew 38% in the second quarter, thanks to multiplayer games like Call of Duty Warzone. Uh, and it was a similar situation across the entire industry. More people playing video games, more profits. And some say that even when we get to a post-pandemic world, the effects on gaming could be permanent. Need him analyst Laura Martin told Yahoo Finance that video game companies benefit near-term and long-term from rapidly rising hours played, broadening demos, more new games tried, higher in-game spending, and limited slash no live sports on TV during the pandemic. So yeah, that's a lot of finance talk, but basically they mean that the more people start playing, the better it is for the industry. You might be able to kind of hook them, they'll become, you know, longer term gamers. Interestingly though, I found a quote from Piscatella who said that more new gamers could bring about new kinds of games going forward. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, he told Yahoo, in the short term, it's been all about trying to get enough consoles, accessories and new content to satiate what's been very strong demand. Beyond that, I think this increase in audience and engagement will only encourage more new content development, which will hopefully bring even more new players. That is the good news. But when it came to actual development of video games, that's where we saw the biggest impact of the pandemic. 2020 mm -hmm. was a bloodbath when it comes to delays. Big blockbusters like The Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima saw their release dates pushed back. Those two games, I think they saw their dates pushed back by like a month, something like that. Uh, it was a lot worse for other highly anticipated games that were hit much harder by COVID. For one, Cyberpunk 2077 has been repeatedly delayed. Uh, developer CD Projekt Red cited the coronavirus as a major factor. It's due out in December, uh, at least when we recorded this video, but that yeah. could always change. By the time you watch this, it might not be out. It might've been delayed. Yeah, believe yeah. it or not, we did not record this on Thanksgiving. Oh, I'm so <laughs> full, but I can't off. not yeah. talk about games. Halo Infinite was supposed to be the big launch exclusive for the Xbox Series X, but that was delayed until next year. I feel like this is the big one. Yes. Like yes. Cyberpunk, I think whatever, you're... they they delay as much as they need to, but this is like a console Nobody seller. had a launch strategy built around Cyberpunk. I don't no, know. no, exactly. No, in fact, Cyberpunk was like actively pushing other games into the future or 
like around right because mm-hmm. right, nobody wanted to release by it yeah. right yeah so part of that delay was due to negative fan reaction after a gameplay trailer was released over the summer but the coronavirus definitely played a part too as developers were forced to work from home which is a colossal pain in the ass even for us about a third of developers surveyed by the game developers conference stated that covid19 caused delays of games they were working on they cited a combination of the pandemic and the remote working conditions i'm surprised it was just a third honestly <laughs> yeah seems, seriously that seems a little low but uh, yeah at the end of the day covid a mixed bag for the industry lots of sales but lots of canceled events delayed games so you know it's it's a it's a it's a balancing act there, there's good mm. and bad uh, so while the pandemic not at an end in fact there's no end in sight actually there kind of there might be i don't know there's there's some we promising only, vaccines we only just happening. got some good news this yeah. this week yeah. of recording hopefully we can get back to some sense of normalcy in 2021 and you know less massive loss of life and all yeah. that stuff but if not you know we'll still have plenty of games to play to hold off the darkness yeah. yeah. So the big news this week was that Cyberpunk got delayed again. You've heard that. We thought it was coming out in a few weeks, but no, it's been bumped to December 10th. It broke up with us again. Oh, and the explanation for the delay was pretty understandable. Developer CD Projekt Red wrote that the biggest challenge for us right now is shipping the game on current gen, next gen, and PC at the same time, which